Okay, hello everybody. So I'm Jan Kara from Tusa Labs. Uh, I'll be speaking today about FA Notify, which is basically file system events notification framework in the Linux kernel. I uh, will give some survey of the changes in this framework that was happening over the last well, year or year and a half, basically. Uh, so there were several new features added, which are, I think, interesting. So it's worth looking at FA Notify. Uh, I happen to be upstream maintainer of this subsystem in the Linux kernel. So if I'm speaking to, about too much details, then please bear with me <laughs> or speak up and I'll try to explain. So first I'll speak about a bit of history of not file system, even notification frameworks in the Linux kernel which is a bit an exercise in API design and how it should not be done. Uh, but that's useful experience. Uh, then I will speak about basic FA Notify functionality uh, and then about some of the extended functionality FA Notify has like permission events. Uh, and then about the new features that FA Notify framework gained, like file system wide event monitoring, uh, some supplemental event information, uh, or directory events, and then about some possible future developments. So if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me either via chat, which I'll try to watch from time to time, or, or just by speaking up my microphone. So, hmm, okay, bit of history. So FA Notify uh, was, uh, so originally there was no file system notification framework and it's a relatively new thing. Uh, so motivation for some file system uh, framework is basically uh, that you want to watch events uh, that are happening in the file system, like new files being created, files being modified or being deleted. Uh, there are also several other events, like for example, when file is being open or closed. And the why this is needed is essentially for features like desktop search, uh, file backup or file mirroring where uh, you simply have some internal application database, say, with the pre-parsed file contents, for example, for the desktop search. Uh, and now you want to keep the database reasonably in sync with what's on disk. But on the other hand, you don't want to uh, like continuously scan through the whole file system to watch all the files that, that you have indexed and start them to verify whether they, they didn't change and stuff like that, because that gets expensive and like interfere, interferes with other workloads and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, as Vasta writes in the chat, antivirus, that's more really, that's directly related to FA Notify as well, yeah? Uh, but I'll speak about it a bit later about particular antivirus concerns. Uh, and, uh, or you can have, for example, file open dialog and then, uh, or even tail uses like file system notification framework. So file open dialog, for example, wants to show you the current contents of the directory and uh, wants to update the list that's shown in the directory when some new file is created in the directory. And or tail, for example, uses also high notify currently to watch whether the, uh, the file has changed. And if yes, like it, it will show you the new tail pages. Like it's in the tail minus F variant where it shows always the latest pages. Uh, so <laughs> uh, okay. So first uh, file system notification framework in Linux, Linux was uh, denotify, which was merged during the 2.4 series. It works only for uh, directories. So basically you can set like denotify watch for directories. 
it's implemented using FC Intel file control uh, system called uh, FNCTL. Uh, so you need open file descriptor for that to basically watch that directory. You have to open it using FNCTL. You have to uh, said say that you are interested in change events and then basically when something changes in the directory uh, you will receive a signal like i'm not sure it's sig io or something like that i'm not sure which signal you will receive actually uh but so so this was the first notification interface and then upon re receipt reception of the signal you are supposed to risk and the directory find what has changed and stuff like that so this has several problems first that you have to have open file descriptor so that's kind of problematic if you have removable media because this prevents unmounting of the file system. Also dealing with signals is very hard. <laughs> uh, so like it's difficult to write the handler in a race-free manner. Uh, and the, like there is also a limit on number of open file descriptors so you can open only several so, so the number of directories you can watch like this is limited and also like you have to always rescan the directory which is sometimes problematic if the directory is large so to address all these problems i notify was created uh it was merged in 2005 in 2.6.13 kernel so it's only 15 years old <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's uh, it already supports monitoring files and directories, uh, so there is no need to open the watched like either files or directories. Uh, you just basically create something like I notify group it is called, and then basically specify which directories or files you want to have watched. And internally in the kernel. The inode is pinned in memory by by the watch, but the file is not. Uh, but you don't have to have open file, so unmount will work as usual and stuff like that. So it like consumes memory, but nothing more. Uh, problem with inotify is that uh, you it's difficult again, still difficult to watch large directory hierarchies because basically you have to take directories that you want to watch and then you have to scan everything that's in the directory uh you know take the subdirectories and you know recourse like this through the directory tree when there are when the directory tree is large you will run out of like watches you can place because there are there is limited number of them also this is race prone because when some directory is created it's not watched so you know, you have to risk scan, find out there is a new directory, place a new tag there, and then scan recursively in the directory again, because before you place the mark there, new content could be added to the directory as well. So uh, also it's somewhat problematic to identify uh, where the change actually happened on a file because there is the classical time to check time to use race so you will get notified that some file has changed but by the time you actually get to process that event there may be a completely different file under that name uh, because i notify will identify the file by the directory in which it happened which is like some id of the, what you have placed and the name that has like under which the change has happened so uh, because of all these problems like uh, there was fa notify created it was merged in 2010 in kernel uh, 2636 uh, and as vlasta has properly noted it was driven completely by the needs of antivirus scanners so Companies like McAfee uh, and uh, other, which provide antivirus scanners, actually uh, wanted to have a way to like re reliably monitor file system events, also to like prevent applications to access untrusted files which were not scanned for for viruses yet and stuff like that. Uh, and also race-free way to monitor for changes on the file system so that they can like uh, 
relied with rec which files are scanned, which are not, and you know, then scan them and check whether there are viruses there or no. So, because this was uh, because this API was really driven by uh, by the needs of the antivirus scanners, this was actually not a superset of iNotify. It provided some functionality which iNotify did not, but didn't provide other functionality. So it was kind of half the bake solution. Uh, but the push for this was really strong, like. And then, oh. so let me describe actually what uh, FA Notify supports. So similar to iNotify, you have to create some uh, like FA Notify instance, FA Notify notification group, let's say, uh, through FA Notify in its system call. So this creates a notification group and returns you file descriptor which identifies this notification group. Now, uh, for this, you need CAPSYS admin capability. It's required basically to system administrator. Uh, it was thought that at least some of the functionality could be made available for unprivileged tasks as well, but like then when people actually were thinking more about it, they found out it's not easily possible. So that actually never happened until now. Uh, like one of these things that uh, which was added for this was like these notification classes. So there are currently three notification classes you can specify when creating the notification group, like pre-content, content, and notif. Uh, and the idea was that for uh, the notification class is like more restricted than the other two pre-content and content. And the idea was also that uh like uh, hierarchical storage could use fa notify which again like never really happened as far as i know uh but uh later people found out that basically any of the fa notify functionality could be used to evaluate elevate like get additional information or get additional privileges so like in the end they just put big Capsis admin check <laughs> in the beginning of the function and decided they will not care about permissions. Uh, so uh, there are also two flags like fun unlimited queue and fun unlimited marks. So with the first flag, the queue, the queue of notification events is unlimited. So basically, we will allocate file system events up until we hit out of we like hit out of memory. Uh, also, with the second flag, unlimited marks, the number of marks uh, application is allowed to, or the notification group is allowed to have is unlimited. Uh, so the first unlimited queue is meant for applications that simply cannot tolerate losing notification events. Because, for example, with iNotify and with FA Notify without this flag as well, when the number of unprocessed events reach a certain th th uh, threshold, we will just start dropping the events and not queuing them anymore. And we'll just queue a special event like there are some lost events. Uh, but antivirus scanners don't want this to happen. They just rather want to take the machine down instead of having some unprocessed events. So they use the unlimited queue feature. So when you have the notification group ready, uh, you can place notification marks inside the group to tell which objects should be watched and which events we should receive. So there is a FA notify mark system call that you call, you tell, you give to it the notification group file descriptor, and then also path to file director or directory uh, that you want to watch. There is possibility to watch like file directory or amount point. So because uh, you obviously need to like differentiate between watching a file or directory or a mount point, there is a flag like fun mark mount, which means that the path is actually, that actual mount point specified by the path should be watched and not just the file or directory itself. 
And then there are there are actually more objects uh, you can place the notification mark on since kernel 4.20. So uh, events that were initially supported by FA notify were the fun access modify, which the whole access is generated when someone reads the file, modify is generated when someone, someone writes to the file. Open gets generated when file is open. That's natural. Open exec is, uh, which is also relatively recent, is generated when uh, file is open for execution by system calls like exec or exec or uh, dl open or stuff like that. Uh, it's mainly for like audit purposes, because obviously you can always like work around this by just reading the file into memory and then just jumping to it and without generating open exec event. But for audit purposes, this is apparently useful. Uh, then uh, there is close event, which comes in two flavors. So close no write is when file which is open only for reading is closed. And the second one is close write, which is uh, generated when uh, like file with write open for writing is closed. This is useful because often you are you do not care about the read only opens. You care only about the ones which could have changed the file. So so then you would be watching the close write event. Uh, then there are permission events, and I will speak about them more in detail later. Uh, so for now, I will skip them. Uh, and then, uh, like initially, there was very limited functionality for directories, basically because fun access was not generated for directory, neither fun modify was generated for directories. Uh, so the only events you could get for directories were open and close, essentially. Uh, and uh, this is not really very useful. Uh, so FA notify initially does not generate any events for directories, even, even if you place mark on them, unless you explicitly specify fun on their mark, uh, flag when, when placing a mark. And like you, you may ask like why you, you would place a mark on a directory without fun on their mark, so you would not, but for, uh, mount point marks, it makes sense. So like for mount point marks without fun on there, no event for directories will be generated. Then there is another interesting flag, which is fun event on child. And so normally when you place a mark on a file or directory, you will get events only for that particular directory, like the di or for this particular file. And for directory, you get, you get just the close or open events. With the event on child flag, uh, you will instead get events uh, on the immediate children of the directory inode. So for example, if you place event on child flag uh, on a directory with fun open, then you will get events for every open of a file in the directory. Uh, so this is basically the behavior which I uh, notify originally has. Yeah, in iNotify, if you place a mark on directory, then you will be getting events on all the immediate children in the directory, and that's exactly what you get with the uh, FA notify with event on child flag. FA notify has also one nice feature uh, which I notify does not have, uh, and it's ignore mask. Uh, so you can actually place ignore mask on a file or directory or basically anything, but it makes sense only on file or directory usually. Uh, so with ignore mask, you can say like which events this file or directory should not generate. So the idea is that, for example, you are watching all open events on a mount point, and then for files you are not interested in, uh, you place on them the ignore mask for fun open events. So if the open happens on that file with the ignore mask, you will not get you will not get the event for the mount point that like there was a file open. So this is uh, this is again for the antivirus scanners which want to which like tag the files they have already scanned and verified 
as safe. Uh, so they take these files with ignore mask, so they don't receive events for them. Like, and uh, this ignore mask actually by default gets cleared uh, on when fun modify event is generated. So when the file is changed exactly because in this case antivirus scanners need to rescan the rescan the file so as you can see the design was really use case centric <laughs> uh, and uh, there is a flag to override this behavior because then people found out that actually there are other interesting use cases for the ignore mask so there is now a flag like ignore surf modify which means that the ignores mask stays uh, stays on the on the file or directory even after a modify event. So uh, next, uh, how you can receive events that were generated for your notification group? So you simply do that by receiving uh, by reading the file descriptor. Uh, that uh, that was returned for the notification group. So this is again very similar to iNotify. Uh, the structure of the events is on the slides. So the first is the length of the event, which you, is like 24 always. But with recent changes, we actually utilize this because we can generate longer events. So this is the length of the event. This is version of the structure, which is always three, and I don't. See See, it will ever change. Like original idea was that this like would be versioned protocol where like applications would be checking the version and then like would refuse to would but it's unclear what they would do if they see a version which they don't understand. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and I, I think think that realistically like there is lots of applications that actually don't check the version at all. So I think that, uh, like, realistically, we cannot just change the version. Interesting that the version is three because, like, uh, initially it was one, but then, like, before the change, before the uh, framework was actually used in practice, uh, like, they needed to do several changes to the structure. So, so the version number is actually three. Then there is one reserved byte. Then metadata land, which is like the length of this actual structure. So it's kind of connected to the version field. Like the idea was that if we need to do the revision to this structure, then then we might possibly like have new, the structure may have different length and this should make it easier. <laughs> uh, so this should make it easier to ignore events you don't understand but again i don't realistically see this changing ever without breaking your applications so like this is currently 24. Uh, then uh, there is a mask uh, which is a mask of events so so uh, this is a bit mask of events that that are being reported uh, fd so fd is the file descriptor open file descriptor for a file where these events happened. So say if you report a uh, fun open event, then FD will be like file descriptor uh, to this file, which was opened. Uh, this file descriptor is actually opened by the kernel uh, and it is responsibility of the application receiving the event to close this file descriptor. Otherwise these file descriptors will accumulate uh, and eventually the application will run out of available file descriptors and there will be like error in this field instead. Or actually there will be fun no FD, no FD value, like meaning that we were not able to open the file. And then there is PID, which is a PID of the application that uh, generated the event. Now with PID, there is the obvious problem that uh, like by the time you receive events, there can be completely different process under this PID because like the process which generated event doesn't need to exist anymore and the PID could have been reused. But just currently we are discussing, uh, and this is an actual problem for some of the users, uh, and we are currently discussing that like how, how to overcome this. Possibly we consider that we would be actually open with FD, uh, 
which will basically pin the FD, uh, the PID as used, and then uh, and then basically the application can find out the original PID and the information about the process that generated even from the bit FD. Uh, okay, now permission events. Uh, so permission events uh, are a structure of renotify, which was I would say the main driver of of FA notify being exactly because of the antivirus scanner use case. So currently there are three permission even supported open perm, open exec perm, which was added in five to the TO kernel and access perm. So again, open perm is generated on open access perm on read. Uh, and it's generated like before the file is really open. It's generated during the access checks for a file. Uh, and the like system call is paused until we receive a response to these events from the application uh, watching the events. Uh, so when like application asks for open perm events, is it, it is responsible for watching for these events and replying to them with the structure which is at the bottom of the slice is this fa notify response structure so there you have the file descriptor which identifies to which event you are replying this is the open file descriptor of the file that has come to you via the fa notify event uh, you have read and then in the response field you have to write either like hello value or deny value these are constant like fun allow fun deny and if you if you write there fun Hello, and write this to the uh, to the notification group descriptor. Then the system call will continue as usual. If you write there fun deny, uh, then uh, the system call will fail with eparam. Now, so this is kind of access con like allows uh, hook to hook into access control and basically the FA notify user can decide uh, which files can be accessed and which not. Uh, so this is powerful, but this comes with also big problems. And most of the problems we see with FA notify are with events because it's difficult to use correctly. The problem is that uh, uh, like often you end up these applications end up with root file system and then when they process these events uh, what ha often happens is that they access some functionality which you know happens to generate more emission events answer to events they need uh, they create like a, a deadlock because to able to add to event the opening of some other file to complete does not happen until they respond to the event so uh, like we have seen lots and lots of deadlocks like this and this is uh, this is like often not so obvious because like it's something hidden in some library or yeah no? Yeah, uh, Jan, I have a remark that uh, I observe your audio is uh, choppy somehow. So I'm not sure if uh, you can do something okay, about it. Is it or better if you now? Just... I, I maybe I might be closer to my mic. Is it better now or? Mm, to, to try to uh, say no. something more? Or... Okay. Yeah, okay. So I have like external mic here which, because the other one has a noise, but I can always switch to the one in the headset. Uh, it will be a bit noisy, but otherwise it's yeah, may, perhaps it's or it could be the no microphone. Uh, oh, yeah, more like a bandwidth. If, if you try uh, turning off your camera, if uh, we can see the difference. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's come maybe it's bandwidth because uh, my my up uplink is actually not very Okay, so I'll go without the microphone then. Uh, or sorry, <laughs> not without the microphone, without the camera. Yeah, it sounds better. So thank you. Okay, sorry yeah, let's try without. No, no problem. So thanks actually. So yeah, so we have, we have mo mostly the problems are with the uh, permission events. Okay. Uh, 
then uh, uh, let me wait before the next slide shows okay now so now let me talk about the recently added features uh, so uh, first uh, feature which was added is like file system wide event monitoring so that was added through funmark file system uh, flag which is uh, specified and create then like adding placing the notification mark uh, this is supported in kernel since kernel 4.20 and you may be curious how this is different from the mount marks like fun mark mount and the point is that actually there can be multiple mount points for a file system when you have stuff like bind mounts or uh, when you have for example user namespaces because it's the simplest way how to evade monitoring uh, using amount marks is that you create your own user namespace uh, and you know switch to it and then basically you have independent mount point hierarchy from from like the parent namespace and uh, basically all the file accesses you will do will be invisible to the mount point watches fa notify because they uh, the accesses now happen through different mount points essentially uh, so uh, for this uh, we have added the uh, mark fi file system marks these are attached directly to file system super blocks so uh, then basically uh, the event will be reported regardless uh, of through which mount point event. Then uh, another another feature which we have added supplemental event information. So uh, we can now report more information with a notification event, and this will be useful. It is useful especially for directory events, but you know sometimes it's useful also for the others. So uh, when you create notification group, you select actually which kind of information you want to receive in an event. Uh, and there are currently three flags you can like uh, you will receive FID, ID or name. Uh, and you can combine these flags almost arbitrarily. Uh, now, Additional information is actually passed in the structure which is attached after the event metadata structure, like FA Notify event metadata structure, and event len in the FA Notify event metadata is updated accordingly to like describe the length of the whole event. Uh, each additional information record, like after the FA Notify event metadata starts with the header, which is at the bottom of the slide, which basically specifies the information type, then there is one byte of padding, and then the length of the additional information. So basically, after you process the initial event metadata, you will like see whether there is, uh, by checking event plan, whether there is some additional info. If yes, you will read the header. Uh, you know, process the additional information in that header, and then if there is still more space in the event, you will read another header and stuff like that, a chain like that. Uh, now, uh, what is what this additional information can be? So, uh, if you specify the report FID, which whole support was added in 5.1, uh, then uh, instead of open file descriptor. Uh, what we pass with the event is actually FSID and struct file handle as used by, for example, open by handle syscall. So uh, like the downside is that for this to work, uh, the file system you are watching has to support NFS exports, which is true for most like on disk file systems that are commonly used like XFS, BDRFS, EXT4, stuff like that. But like some less common file system don't support NFS exports. So for this, for these, this won't work. Uh, the advantage is that there is no need for kernel to open files. So uh, 
this is advantages a when you don't actually need the file to be open just you need to gather some information and uh, it also allows wider range of events which is kind of implementation detail but actually a substantial one because to open a file you specifically need in kernel to have mount point available uh, through which you are accessing the file uh, for some permission checks and stuff like that uh, but uh, this is not really available in all the places like where we would like to generate events like now i don't speak about uh, just open or close but for events like directory events uh, uh, there is uh, like there is no mount point uh, associated for like creating a file or for uh, removing a file or stuff like that, and this is not like a fundamental problem, but it's how VFS is actually designed, and uh, well, it would be very difficult to actually propagate the mount point information into those places, because like for example, the, these these operations can happen for from like for example nfs uh nfs server and stuff like that and there the mount point information even isn't available in the kernel so like it would be very difficult like we would have to write a new infrastructure for, NF for nfs to actually track these mount points and somehow provide it just for the sake of fa.fi so anyway, if you use the FID reporting, the structure, there is the header, which I've already spoken about, then there is this FSID, which is the uh, identification of file system. So statfs actually reports this FSID. So like your application have to use statfs to cache the FSIDs of the file systems, its watches, and then match these to the FSID reported here. And there is then there is the file handle as like struct file handle there okay uh other is a defit uh which is very recent addition since kernel 5.9 uh it's very similar to uh, fun report fit but now we report directory which is associated with the event uh which we report uh so uh, this makes it if so for directories there is no difference because for directory the directory associated with the event is the directory itself so there's no difference but for files we report the parent directory and there it is interesting because generally reporting directory fid is interesting when you want to somehow reconstruct the path where the event happened uh, and uh, this is not possible easily for files uh, but for like when you have like all the directory handle then you can always like walk to the parent through the dot dot directory entry so so for uh, once you get to at least one directory then you can fully reconstruct the path if you want but like there's the caveat that always the path can change so you have to be like uh, you, the only thing you can be sure is that you can reconstruct a path that was valid at some point in time, but well, that's as good as it gets. Uh, also, uh, like with direct uh, directory FIDs, there is, there is the f fact that these are not actually always available. For example, when the event happened on unlinked file. There is simply no, no parent directory to report. Or when you are in a root directory, then like you are changing file in a root directory, then or you would like to change the well for like other situations where the parent is not defined, we just cannot report it. And then uh, the last event, uh, the last uh, information that can be reported is like report name. Uh, which uh, basically need, requires uh, that the report directory FID uh, to be all like this requires directory FIDs to be also reported. Uh, so uh, this uh, report name, also the file name, is appended to the directory FID information. So for directories, this will be just dot 
uh, so that uh, and for files it will be really the name in the directory we report in the uh, directory of id event so so then you can use the handle and the name for say open by handle at syscall uh, so that you can open the file that was subject to the event now i'll hurry up a bit so the next feature which we have which uses all these extensive like extensible application events are directory events so they are added in kernel 5.1 uh, but then basically they use these like they are they become really much more useful with the uh, extended events uh, we have added in kernel 5.9 uh, so uh, basically the idea here is that uh, we currently FA, like before this FA notify was not really useful for watching any changes in the directories like renames or creates, deletes. There was no way to do this with FA notify, uh, only with I notify. And people wanted to combine the capability to say watch the whole file system with the with the capability to watch the changes in the directories. So we have added these new events like which mirror the I notify events like move to move from create delete delete self move self a trip. Uh, these mirror the <coughs> I notify events are generated at exactly the same moments. Um, and uh, so. Uh, well, they allow efficient monitoring of like large directory hierarchies. If you want to watch the same, the whole file system for these changes, then these are useful. And there are actually already applications like this was driven actually by application need because there are like out of three patches to implement something like this. Uh, and uh, so we were kind of like all the work was kind of like creating ex upstream acceptable way of implementing this functionality uh, so there is like the file system mirroring application that actually use this these events to like create a se separate file system mirror or on another machine so with the these events we more or less have the feature parity with i notify in fa notify uh, there are there is still caveat through the, so that uh, like you still require administrative privileges to we still require administrative privileges to use FA notify. Uh, so uh, also these directory events actually uh, require the FID, the FID or name flex to be specified because as I already mentioned, like there is not enough information in the kernel to say to generate like open directory for the fun create event or stuff like that uh, and this is very difficult to uh, overcome so in future if something substantial in vfs changes we might be able to provide this functionality but for now it's unsupported and i think that's about it from the fa notify functionality uh, so uh, but I have maybe a minute or two for the future. So basically there are two big things I'm aware of with FA notify. One is the requirement of CAPSIS admin capability. So we may be actually are thinking about relaxing this at least for some subset of the functionality. Like, like probably it's not likely to happen for like say permission events because there is, it's very like easy to lock up the whole machine with permission events but say for just the informational events we might relax the requirement to like just like say capduck research capability which is used for open by handle syscalls anyway and like this will reflect the fact that you can learn about part of directory hierarchy you would otherwise not be able to see because of the like directory permissions, yeah, but uh, then like we could still add some checks, but yeah. Uh, also, like there is some idea floating around about watching of efficient watching of directory subtrees. Like currently you can watch the whole file system and then you filter the events in user space, which is actually what the applications are doing. It's just slightly problematic uh, or problematic. The problem is that 
is that there can be lots of events generated for the file system and uh, like you, you do have to you have a lot of events that you need to pass from kernel to user space uh, and then filter the events in user space so like there is idea we might be filtering the events already in kernel somehow maybe by like allowing bpf filters or something like that but you know it's not really clear how we would do this or if bpf would be actually strong enough to implement some like directory tree filter but yeah we are basically hashing out ideas just what could we do or maybe we could implement this by implementing something like something like recursive notification marks so for example we like it would be a type of mark that when another directory is created under the directory marked in this way then we would it would automatically inherit the notification mark so this way basically it would be possible to just take the whole directory tree and then you would know that like everything that gets created under the directory tree is already tagged so you are not losing any events in that directory tree yeah so that's all from the fa notify land uh, so if there are any quick questions then uh, okay i'll just skip this so if there are any quick questions then uh, feel free to ask what missing uh, so i'll read the question from alesh what missing features or performance impact or something different lead antivirus makers to prefer in current so in kernel solutions uh, it's becoming more common in dumps becoming uh, coming to us uh, so i believe their idea is that they want to use they essentially want to have access control over the file system yeah so so they they want to be effectively something like lsm like security module that decides whether uh, an application can access the file or not like they want to be in this position but on the other hand they are not able to do some statical tagging or I, it's not like i'm not sure i i think it would be possible but like their idea is that they want to do this differently so so they really want these permission even so they did so that they can like verify that the file is correct before they allow uh before they allow some application to read it and this is impossible to do from user space Yes, it does mean that read can fail with eTerm. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> so th that's a question to Michal Kubeček. So, sorry, I didn't re uh, read the question. So did I understand correctly that fun access perm is generated on read? Does it mean that read can fail with ePerm? Yes, so I actually didn't check the code, uh, but yes, as far as I know, it, it should be possible that read fails with eperm due to this. Uh, and uh, well, but to be fair, I most applications are using actually fun open pair uh, because access perm just gets generated too often, and it would be just too big overhead. So. I actually don't know about anybody using the access perm event, but in principle, it's possible. <laughs> yeah, probably no application expects that. Yeah, <laughs> like, but they can. I suppose they can get other errors from read, and like most applications actually don't care about the error, actual error they get. So. But I believe actually LSM module can act, uh, also result in refusing read. I, I I have to like I would have to check the code, but I suppose that you can actually implement an LSM module that will audit read syscalls and will fail them uh, if it deems so. And in that case, read would return eperm as well, as far as I know. But this is just from top of my head, like these details are not always consistent as one would expect. So 
maybe it's not like that, but I think it's quite possible that it actually is that way. So FA notify is not like no substantial different in this way. Okay, I guess if there are no more questions, we are already a few minutes over time. So thank you very much for your attention. And I think we can close this session. Like if you have more questions, then feel free to just mail me or contact me on IRC or whatever. Yes, uh, thank you, Jan. Your presentation was very comprehensive, I would say. and. Uh, yeah, it was end of the day, so likely the infrastructure was already giving up. So I apologize for the quality if it was perceived by the viewers. I stopped the recording now.